Okay, so let's talk about stop loss placement when you're placing your trades. Let's talk about um, is there a correct way to place your stop loss? Is there a um, what are you looking for when you're placing your stop loss? What actually tells you that that a trade will not work out? Okay, so let's let's find a let's find a, a good chart to look at something that's easy on the eye, something that shows good examples, so we can kind of see what I'm talking about when it comes to placing the stop loss. Let's look at the um, let's let's look at the pound NZD. Does that do it? Yeah, not bad, not bad. We could have selected a better chart, but this is okay. Um, all right, so let's talk about stop loss. So the point of this video is to just make you, it's just, it's just to allow you guys to understand or get an understanding of why I place my stop loss in the, in the places that I place them. Okay. Now for a lot of us, depending, of course, depending on the strategy that you're trading, depending on the time frame that you're trading, all determines or kind of determines on how we place our stop losses. But the question, the question I've always asked when it comes to stop losses, what does a stop loss really indicate? Does it indicate that I'm wrong in my trade? Does it indicate uh, maybe I am wrong today, but not tomorrow in the trade? Does it indicate, um, you know, your stop loss getting hit? Um, does it just indicate maybe I place the stop loss a little bit too close? Or, you know, things like that. Um, and what I've come to realize that no matter where you place the stop loss, for me, for me, as for, for me at least, the stop loss should indicate not only am I wrong in this trade, but I'm wrong in my direction that I feel the trade is going. Right? So when you say that, you're talking about so a few things have to be considered. Mainly the strategy. What strategy am I trading? How long do I plan on staying in the trade? And um, you know, things of that nature, right? So for me, I am a swing trader. I already know I'm looking to stay in the trade more than 24 hours, more than 24 hours for the most part. I would love to hit my take profits a lot sooner, but based on the strategy that I trade and where I get my signals from, a lot of times, most of the times, I, I don't hit take profits the same day. And that's perfectly fine with me because it gives me, the strategy that I trade gives me more peace of mind. I'm not a day trader and you know, I firmly believe that you have to trade based on your personality right so when you're choosing um just food for thought when you're choosing a trading strategy always remember to factor in your personality some um, high frequency trading is, is definitely not for me because it doesn't fit my personality i may have anxiety i may get you know anxious to take to take a trade or may feel the pressure to try and make money on a daily basis so high frequency trading um, doesn't necessarily work for me. I'm not a position trader because I like to, you know, earn my profits in shorter time. I don't like to be in trades for a month, two months or, or things like that. I'm not a scalper because again, that goes back to the high frequency trading. <clears throat> but like I said, when you're thinking about a stop loss strategy, you always should factor in or you should consider your trading strategy, which, which you should be trading based on your personality but nevertheless so what what am i what am i looking at when it when it's time for me to place a stop loss what do i want to stop loss until well basically i want to stop loss if my stop loss gets hit i don't want i don't want it to, to tell me that i don't want my stop loss to be hit simply because i may have entered the trade a little too fast or I, there could be a whipsaw in the market, most um, mostly caused by news, things things like that. I would rather have my stop loss getting hit tells me that I am completely in the wrong direction of the market. When I thought the market was going down, it was actually going up. Where I thought the market was going up, it still wanted to continue down. So I can live with that because no matter if my stop loss is 50 pips or if my stop loss is 200 pips or 300 pips, um, money management is the key to good, is one of the keys to good trading. So I'm only risking 2% per trade, no matter how big my stop loss is. The only difference with that is it may take me longer to hit my profit target because I'm only risking a certain amount and I'm really not worried about how large the stop is 
if it makes sense. So let me show you guys. So let me um let me find a good place on the chart where I would be more likely to take a signal um, during this trade. And let me look at another time frame because another chart because this isn't offering a lot of good um, signals. And I'm just randomly picking out charts. I haven't planned this out or anything like that. But let's um, okay. So let's look at let's look at something that makes more sense in my explanation and my analysis of this um, video. So this is obvious where you would place a stop here. So we won't even use this. We won't. We're not going to even use this trade example right here. We're going to look at something like. Let's look at something like um, either this example. Let's look at this example right here. Let's look at this example right here. So on the daily time frame, here is where I would get a signal to go short on this at the close of this candle right here. Right now, this isn't where I would enter the trade. I don't. I'm not entering based on this move. Uh, well, I am. I am getting a signal to go short based on this move but prior to this candle closing I don't know that this is going to happen so I'm not I don't make any money on this candle because I'm not guessing part of my new level strategy you, we're not guessing what's going to happen here we wait and we just follow the market so this would be the signal I received to go short right which means this is the day I would be trading on right here I would actually enter a trade on this day because the signals are confirmed at the close of the trading day. So this is the signal to go short. So let me go in and mark in a potential entry would be right there. But more importantly, based on this video, we're looking at a potential stop loss. OK. All right. So here is the stop entry. Here is what we trade on this day here. So let's drop down to the one hour time frame. We'll go down to the one hour to look at a potential entry and we'll get better we'll get a better understanding of why and where I place my stop losses all right so let me just find this location here in fact let's pan out let's go to the end and let's stroll all the way back to find this location on the um, on the daily on the one hour time frame that we marked off on the daily so it may take me a second to get there but I promise I'm going to get there and we're going to, I'm going to give you guys a reason why I would place my stop loss where I placed it. So there it is. We just passed it. Let me back up. Here's the location right here. So let me blow this up again so you guys can see it. So, hope I didn't, hope this, okay, here it is right here. Okay. <clears throat> so essentially, this would have been that one daily candle, because remember, on a one hour time frame, this is that one daily candle broken into 24 hours. These are one hour candles. So this would have been that move that actually gave us the signal that price wanted to go to sell off. This is the candle. This is that whole, this is that one big uh, daily candle. So remember, if this is the candle that gave us a signal, remember our potential entry was at the close of that candle, right? And the they were trading Remember when I put the line on the candle that we're trading it always starts at the beginning of the day on the one hour so this is the day that we're actually taking the trade on this day right here but so the question is where do I put my stop loss okay now essentially what I am saying is this why so why wouldn't I put my stop loss here why why was my stop loss here and why wasn't it here okay the one that I plotted in this is the line for the one that I plotted in I plotted it up here so what 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 happened what takes place here is price pulls back and it puts us in the move but what often takes place is price may pull back a little bit here it may sell off then it may give you another pull back here before price wants to run into the direction that we feel price is going we feel that price is going to sell off so the reason why I put my stop loss here is because this is the beginning of the move. In my opinion, this is the first leg of the move right here. In order for price to no longer want to sell, if this is the reason why I sold this move right here, in order for price to no longer want to sell off, 
price has to trade higher than this location right here. Price has to trade higher than this right here. Because if price simply pulls back in this area right here, but it doesn't break this high, then does that really say that I'm wrong in my trade, in my trade analysis? No, it doesn't. It's just saying that price has a deeper retracement or pullback than maybe I would like for it to have. Because, and I say I would like for it to have because you you never you never tell you never control the market, so we can't tell the market what to do or anything like that. We only can move with the market. The market leads, we follow. That's how it goes. So until price breaks this level right here, where I initially placed my stop loss on the daily time frame at the swing of this move because this is the move that actually started the downtrend remember it was going up so on the reversal this is the move that started the downtrend so if price and we and we always take the move that starts the downtrend is our trade signal so this is the move that actually gave us momentum to the downside it happened actually over a day and a half but when we got the signal we recognized that this is the starting point of the move so in order for me to be wrong in my a trade analysis, not actually the trade, I am trading my trade analysis. When I place my stop, I'm not looking at the, the particular trade itself. What I'm saying is that price is going to continue to the downside. You get what I'm saying? Price is going to continue to the downside. It may pull back a little bit. I may not have the best entry in the world, but price is going to trade to the downside. Now keep in mind, this is based on the strategy that I trade. This is based on a swing trading strategy. If you're looking at day, a day trading strategy, then that would be probably a different um, type of stop loss that you would want to place. But based on the strategy that I trade, price has to tell me that it no longer wants to continue down. It wants to break this high and continue to trade higher. This is the reason why I place my stop loss back here because I'm not interested in being whipsawed out of the market. What I, when I concede to a trade and my stop loss is hit, I want the price to say, Hey, guess what, buddy? We're no longer going down. We're going up. Then once I understand that and price is going up, then I can better sleep with taking a loss. <laughs> that goes back to trading my personality. I can better accept taking a loss because I not only was wrong in my trade analysis, but I gave the, the trade time to play out. I understood that I may get a deeper retracement, but no matter how deep the retracement goes until price breaks these levels right here, then I am still correct saying that price wants to go down. Price has to show me that it wants to go up by not only breaking this level, but trading higher than this level. And since I'm only risking 2% of my um, of my entire portfolio or my entire e equity, then it doesn't really matter. I'm not over anxious about the trade because I could lose 2% as long as I'm trading. I'm trading a strategy that actually works that gives me a high probability to win. So I hope that's understandable to you guys as to why I place my stop loss where I place the stop loss. Remember, wherever you place the stop loss is not right or wrong. Um, you wanna back test and forward test the stop loss strategy, same as you would test a strategy and see what the probability is. Um, the reason why back testing is so important is because when you, when, you, when you lose a few trades, because you back test it so well and you back test it correctly, wasn't biased in your back testing, you can understand why you factor that into the win percentage, right? So new level has a 70, 70 to 75 percent win percentage. I already know that 25 percent of my trades are going to not work for whatever the reason is. Um, they're not going to work because um, what I thought was a setup wasn't a setup or momentum just wasn't in my favor, you know, but I can live with that because I back tested correctly. So when it comes to stop loss, that's why I place it. I hope you guys understand. I hope you guys really appreciate the video. If you do, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. Forex King, we out.